Yes, sir. Um, interesting conversation. I know it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be lit, and it's, I'm really excited. The gist and um, honestly speaking, I'm tempted to go above the normal one and a half hours. I'm feeling like uh, we could do two hours here because uh, this gist is hot, and it's going to get hot because um, uh, I've not gotten to where we want us to be. We've been ranking it up, and uh, we're going to get there. And you can see the passion of which Roland is talking about cricket. So when you see him in those games in Dubai, in Namibia, in all those places, you already know that this is someone who is passionate about cricket. So yes, uh, I'm going to find Roland now um, to speak more about things, about cricket development, about life, and um, see how, how, how this goes. Yeah, but uh, interesting conversation. I've also used this small time to do some advertisement as well to tell the people that I know about this discussion happening um unfortunately i can't find roland now uh i have to go back again uh akitoku is sending a request to be in my video why um i don't know what's happening i can't find roland uh ah Yes. Uh, wow. Thank you, Roland. <laughs> so I used that. Um, I used that time to quickly make some advertisement to the London Nigerians Club to to make them come on here. Yeah. So you were talking you about your friend. Dutch, yeah. My Dutch friend. So yeah. so at one point I was explaining to him what we we're doing and so on. And he said, oh, "This is very good." He, he said, "How can I support you?" So so wow. he said, "You know, can I give you some 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 money to to support you?" And and I said, "Yeah, of course." Uh, very, very happy to, to have that support. Uh, and I said, uh, what do you want in, in, in return? Uh, and he said, well, I don't know. Well, what do you think? I said, uh, you know what? Uh, 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 let, me, let me put an article in, in the newspaper. You know, we used to have, I think it was Wednesdays, they used to have cricket in the Guardian. Uh, so I'll put an article about your sponsorship of, uh, of, of our club. Uh, and he said, okay, but I don't want it to be uh, about me. Uh, my, I don't want my name to appear. I said, uh, okay, so what do you want me to put? He said, well, l just say that a company called Big Orange uh, has sponsored you. <laughs> just a name that, that he made up like that. Uh, so wow. so I, 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 I wrote the article because I was a regular contributor to, 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 that, uh, to, to that page in the paper. And there was an article uh, on that Wednesday about Big Orange sponsorship of Pebu Kota Cricket Club. And I, I gave it to him. In fact, he still has it in a frame in his office in The Hague now. Wow. He still has that article. <laughs> but, but the interesting thing about it is that I was at a, 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 a game, actually at Unilag at the weekend, and I heard two people in front of me talking. And one of them said, ah, did you see that uh, FGC Worry don't get a new sponsor? The other one said, yes, Big Orange, I know them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, mean, I had to laugh at this. <laughs> No way! Yes. <laughs> I just did their back. I just did listen. <laughs> <laughs> wow, interesting. Yeah. So that that was going to be my next question, right? Um, I know in 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 your company you are up there as as a director and big up there. What 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 do you think it would take for us to tap into Shell? Shell to get um, a major sponsorship. I remember NNPC, NNPC, when I hear NNPC now, I think about cricket years ago, right? So I'm trying to think, is it possible to go through you or is it, is it not possible or what is it? What does it look like? Yeah, in, in, uh, in Nigeria, uh, it, yeah. it, it's, uh, I'll be very honest and open with you. It's quite difficult, particularly now that um, that I'm outside. Yep. Uh, I I don't like to one. I, I don't have any role, uh, and also uh, we have to be very careful in in this day and age of being clear on what conflicts we may or may not have in any in in any given situ situation. Uh, so, so at, at at the time when I was actively involved in uh, in, in cricket in Lagos, I, I didn't want there to be a perceived conflict of interest between anything that I was doing with from a shell perspective and and what I was doing in my in in my private life. Yeah. Uh, 
but so but but I would say it, it, we we should approach a company like Shell like any other corporate uh, sponsor, potential corporate sponsor that we're thinking of. And the first thing is to understand what what are they trying to do from a from a corporate social responsibility perspective, from a CSR perspective. So uh, uh, th th this is not necessarily entirely accurate, but you, for example, in, in Shell, you you know that a lot of what they, they are doing is around, you know, their their relationship with the host communities in in the, in the Delta area in the Delta. and how do they improve that. So if I was approaching a company like Shell, I would be looking at how can I show them something that is going to help maybe in, in, in the schools, in the local communities, in, in those areas where they have a presence and say, look, I can bring something to you that is going to help you where to build that relationship with your communities to, to maybe uh, you know, uh, improve uh, people who, the, the lives of people whose children are going to school in, in, mm -hmm. in those areas. And, and I would build uh, uh, my proposition for something like cricket around that to try and make it targeted to them. Mm. That's interesting. And uh, that's something um, people have talked about. And yeah, that's a good point. I don't know if anyone in here, uh, endurance, yes, endurance, show you the here. Because mm -hmm. endurance is part of the board. Now, um, we've done six of your top 11. Now let's go to nine, the, the, the next three. Uh, excellent. Okay. Uh, uh, number seven, uh, and uh, he would be, uh, uh, I think, my captain in this uh, in, in this eleven, uh, is a a very uh, very tough cricketer, very tough all round sportsman. Uh, I, I remember he played with me in uh, in uh, uh, in school. He played with me in national team and played with me in uh, FGC Warrior Students Association. Uh, and I remember one of the the, the youngsters. Complaining one one day that uh, that our guard shouted on him, I said he has been shouting on me since I was ten years old. So you know, <laughs> get get used to it. Uh, his name is Obo Moigui. Um, interestingly, Obo was not a big cricketer at secondary school. Uh, he he really became a, a, a cricketer when, when he was at university. And one of the reasons for that is he he was an all round sportsman. Till today, he plays basketball, he plays football, he plays so many other sports. His hand-eye coordination is incredible. Anyone who has seen him will tell you that he is not a classical player. He's not someone who you 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 necessarily show videos of to to young kids and say, uh, "This is how you so should bat." <laughs> yeah. But but he had such fantastic hand-eye coordination that he was able to make that work for him. And he had such strength of character that when when we we're talking about people for difficult situations. Or Bo is a cricketer for a difficult situation. Wow, interesting. So, he, so here I would have him at my number seven. Number seven, yep. Uh, number eight, uh, again, uh, a, a, a young man who I was uh, fortunate enough to play with, uh, both in, uh, in the national team, but also when he was uh, living here in, uh, in the UK. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's now moved, uh, uh, and uh, I saw him actually uh, a, a year or so ago back in Nigeria, having not seen him for, for a long time. Uh, uh, a, a beautiful swing bowler uh, was 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 able to, to to bend the ball around corners. His name is mm. Tayo Kusonya. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, fantastic. Yeah. He, he played with me also at Sheen Park for a while, uh, oh. and, and yes, indeed. And he yeah. he was the opening opening bowler for for us for a while at Sheen Park. I, I used wow. to, to 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 bring him to to Sheen to, to play with us. Uh, and I also remember playing with him a, a, a match for London Nigerians at, uh, at TBS, mm -hmm. where between us we, we chased down, uh, I think it was 249 against, uh, against the, the, the visiting uh, Wari cricket side. We, we had a match against them uh, and uh, we put on a, a partnership of, uh, of well over uh, 150. Uh, so as well as being a, a great swing bowler, he also developed into, into a, a, a very handy batsman as well. Wow. And, and then number nine, uh, a, a gentleman who I first saw at the golf course in Benin City. When I was a little boy, I would go down to the golf course to, to watch cricket. I remember the first time I found that there was actual live cricket being played in Benin. Uh, and so anytime I, I got a chance, I would always pass by the golf course in the hope that there would be some cricket being played there. 
Uh, and eight times out of ten, there will be nobody there. But on on the odd occasion, mm. there will be cricket there. Uh, and, and I remember watching this guy running in, uh, and, and you know the the ball flying out of his hand like an Exocet missile. Uh, and I, I didn't <laughs> I, I didn't think that at at one point I would be down the other end of the pitch watching those Exocet missiles coming towards me. And his name is Michael Mariogai, Ooh, also known yeah. as Big e. Yes. Interesting. So I was going to ask, um, you mentioned Tayo Kusoya. I was going to mention, uh, have you seen his uh, twin brother? No, twin brother in, well, not his twin brother, his best friend. Um, what's his name now? Uh, Dakbo. Dakbo Adeguke. Adeguke, yeah. Yes, indeed. So the, I, I remember the first time I saw the two of them together, one bowling in swing and one bowling out. Bowling out swing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. So I, I didn't see as much of Dakbo as I did of Tayo, but okay, indeed Tyre. I, I have seen cool. yeah. Yes. So um, from so this is about administration now. From your experience as a national selector, what parts of what part of our process would you change? Uh, so so that question was asked from from a, the, the the perspective of a selector. So so let me let me try it from that perspective. And indeed, I was uh, I was fortunate enough to to serve as a, as a national selector for a number of years. I, I think one of the things that that I didn't like about the way we went about selection in those years that it was kind of a a snapshot, you know. So we have a a tournament coming uh, a, a a short while to the tournament. We say, okay, let us gather players. Who are the players that we need to gather for trials? Okay, let's hold trials. We hold trials. We play with two, three, four matches. Okay, now selectors sit down and uh, uh, and come up with a uh, with a team. I, I think we uh, and I hope that we are doing that now. I think selection really needs to be a year round process. It's a 365 day a year process. Use every day. The selectors should be thinking about what kind of team do we want, what kind of brand of cricket do we want to play, and therefore what kind of people are we looking for? Do we need someone? You know, at the top of the order, who we think is going to uh, to, to 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 play tight and 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 be the rock around which the other players are going to express themselves. How do we want to make up our bowling attack? You know, do we want to have a a a a a spinner who who is going to be able to tie up an end? Maybe somebody who's going to be hostile with the new ball. Uh, maybe someone who can keep it tight in the middle. Okay, these are the kind of players that we're looking for. Okay, let us make sure we have a network in place around the the, the country. So that we can find players who might fit into those different roles, and when we find those players who might fit into those roles, how do we test them? Maybe there's somebody in uh, uh, in Port Harcourt who, who who fits that profile, but do we know whether he's able to uh, to do it at a higher level? How do you give him that exposure before you come to a national trial that maybe you know if he's suddenly playing in in, in a uh, in a place or on a pitch that he hasn't played before, how do you give them that exposure so that when you are bringing them to that level of, of, of now, you know, we want to pick who we're getting into the senior team, uh, that, that everybody has had that exposure. They know what's expected of them and they really can give their best. Mm. Okay, I hope that answers the question for Mr. Tish, T, uh, the middle stump. Oh, I don't know who this one is. Okay, yeah, that's Tishu. Yeah, that's Tishu. Anyway, yeah, so going to... Sports administ administration now, um, as things are in Nigeria. If you had the opportunity, if, for example, you're the vice president of the country and um, you are able to change, you know, military rule, military style. <laughs> you're able to say, this is who I want as the, because you love cricket, this is who I want as an administrator, as the NCF president, right? Just give us three people who you think have impressed you over the years in terms of administration and you think if given the opportunity, they will do well. That's a very, uh, a very interesting question. I, I, I heard you asking before, so I knew that, yes. uh, I, knew that uh, I wasn't going to <laughs> escape it. Uh, but but, but, but it's still, uh, it still doesn't make it an, e an easy question because mm. for, for two reasons. So, so, so one is, I think there, there is something about being a... a a president of an organization, which is even a different challenge from being a great mm -hmm. administrator, being a board member, being part of a technical committee. Mm -hmm. so, so the presidency is a, is a particular role because, again, it comes down to uh, not only having that vision of where you want to take an organization, 
but, but also having the way of, of aligning all the forces to go in that direction. Yes. Uh, uh, so, so really, it, it, it's a very tough job. Um, but I think uh, that from what I have seen, albeit from a bit of a distance at the moment, uh, I, I would love to see uh, in due course uh, somebody like Ui Akpata move into that position. Okay. Uh, that's just one person. Okay. Given an opportunity three. to say, yeah. You, you said three. Yeah. Okay. And another person who I think, if if you could persuade him uh, to to uh, uh, to devote the the time and energy uh, required, I think would do a fantastic job. Uh, and it's uh, uh, his name has also been mentioned on this show before, so it won't be a complete surprise. But I I, mm -hmm. I saw him in action in the Lagos League. I've seen him in action with the uh, Ibejuleki Cricket Club. I think Femi Sholebo. That's okay. another name that I would give you. Okay. Uh, uh, and the third name, uh, I, I, think, uh, um, I, I think just for his passion, for his belief in himself, he always says, why not me? Uh, you know, I, 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 can, I, I can do this. I can take this forward. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, I, I, I would see him as someone who I definitely want to be part of my administration going forward is uh, the birthday boy, Enjoy so Fem. Endurance of him. Okay, you think. Okay, oh, fantastic. That's interesting. All right. So we've named these three people who are fantastic, but there is still a challenge, right? How, in your opinion, do we get people of this? Um, how do I say now? People like this. How do we get them into becoming the president? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's an interesting question to ask. Uh, you know, you know Uyi, for example, has been involved in cricket for a long time. Uyi was in my yeah. school. I, again, yeah. I used to watch him from, from the boundary. So I've always known about his, his passion for cricket. Um, but it's only in recent times that you know, he, he has really had the, uh, uh, the, the inclination to really dive in and get, get fully involved. So I, I asked myself the question, why is it that someone who clearly has loved this game for a really long period of time, why is it only now, what is it that has made, um, uh, made it such that he, he is now ready to, uh, uh, to come into the, uh, into the fold? I think one of the things, and, and it's sometimes uh, something that I had felt uh, when I looked at cricket, we have been quite divisive as a community uh, over the years, you know, and really, we don't have, there are not enough of us, we don't have the resources uh, to, to, to be divisive, to be, to be fighting with each other. We, we just can't afford uh, to, to, to waste that energy. You know, we, we won't always have the same points of view about everything, uh, but, but I think as long as we recognize that we all have broadly the same interest at heart, yeah. um, that, that, that if we can be more unified as a body that will inspire more people uh, to, to want to be part of that and to, to want to do something. Again, I can tell you from, from the, the 10 years that I spent in, in, in the Lagos League, uh, the, the amount of uh, negative input that you get of people saying, uh, I'm not happy about this, you know, I, I, I'm not, uh, uh, you guys, you, you, you did something wrong. Of course, we always do things wrong. As I said, it's the same, same way that I, that I got into it was by pointing at, uh, pointing at things that weren't going well. Yeah. But would therefore be ready when somebody asks you the question, Stop. okay, come and help. Yeah. Be ready to be positive. Be ready to be part of moving things forward as opposed to throwing rocks from the outside. Yes, um, 100%. And um, uh, that, that is true. I, I agree with you. We need, always need to be ready and we need to push up. And never to be, always be the, <laughs> to be the one complaining and throwing jabs at people. Grab it as well. Wow, interesting. So I'm still waiting for questions from people. There was a question earlier, but I can't find it now. Uh, guys, if you've got questions, we have Roland here. In my head, I'm thinking, Roland will leave now, and all the questions will start coming, and people will start, <laughs> people will start saying, oh, ah, this question, that question, or I should have asked this question. And we have two minutes. Ah, oh, man, ah, no, we can't have two minutes. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I'm going to ask questions. We still have, you still have two more people to to name your top 11, wouldn't it? Yes, let, let's do that. Okay. Yes, so uh, n number, number 10, I would put uh, 
uh, a, a, another bowler who uh, I um, was privileged to play with here in uh, in the UK. I, I I didn't know him when he was playing for Nigeria, but I heard a lot about him. Uh, but I played with him here for London Nigerians and again also for Sheen Park in in in, in the early days of uh, of London Nigerians. Again, big big swinger of the ball, uh, always posing a threat to, to batsmen. Uh, his name is uh, Vincent Olise, also known as Parfilin. Yeah. Yeah, I think I met him just once, yeah. or, or yeah. twice, anyway. Yeah. Yes, you know his so, son is now a professional footballer. Professional footballer, right? yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, so the number 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 eleven. Eleven, yeah. Number yeah. eleven. Number eleven. Uh, a, a another player who I was privileged to play with uh, in, in the national team. Um, uh, he had a long career. Uh, and has uh, always been a stalwart of that team from the same uh, uh, the same stable as uh, uh, as uh, uh, Kunle is uh, his, his new ball partner Joshua Ogunlola. Uh, and I remember particularly a game against Tanzania in 2004 where Josh uh, was just unstoppable. Uh, he took seven wickets, run through the the Tanzania side. Uh, it seemed like every time he the ball left uh, left his hand, it was either going to hit the stumps or hit the pads. He was wow. a tremendous bowler. Now, so you have the grace of taking one more person um, in here. I call the, I call the person the water boy. It could be a twelfth man. It could be someone you know you just love in your team. And yeah, so who will that person be? Yes, uh, I thought uh, I thought uh, a bit about this one, but. Uh, um, Someone who, uh, in the years that I played in uh, in, in Lagos, where the with the uh, uh, Federal Government College Royal Students Club, was always uh, always did a job for me. Uh, could always be called upon, whether on the field, off the field, even till today. Uh, I know when I go to Lagos, if I call him, um, that uh, he he will come and he will be ready to see me. Uh, is uh, actually the, the 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 man known as. Uh, uh, Ape Junior, Frank Omozajeli. Wow, someone has actually said that here. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. Wow, so one question. I, I don't know, from my end, I have one more question. And um, if tomorrow you are called to say, Roland, we have an opportunity for you to become the NCF president, will you take it? No, let's assume. Let's assume you are retired from work. Yeah. Okay. Let's assume, let's assume that. that. Let's, let's assume that. Yeah. Do you know it's it's a difficult question. I think honestly, I think the answer is no. Wow. Uh, and, and and let me let me explain why. Uh, I I I said earlier about the qualities needed in a president, and I don't think I have all of those qualities to be the, the best president that, uh, that NCF could have. I think I could very much, and I would love to if, uh, if, if I didn't have to earn a living to pay school fees, I, I would love to be part of, of the leadership of Nigerian cricket. I, would, I, I, I think I certainly have a lot to offer, but, but I think the, the statesmanship required of a president, the ability to, uh, uh, to, to, to sort of um, uh, align different interest groups. You know, it, there, there is a lot of political capability needed in, in in a job like this. And to be honest, I'm not a very good politician. You know, I I, uh, I, I tend to be a little bit too direct and a bit too obvious in in, in what I say sometimes. Uh, and I think that would create maybe a bit too much friction and would not necessarily be in the best interest of uh, of the federation. Yeah, this is quite interesting because um, normally people would either say, ah, of course, <laughs> good to have worked. <laughs> yes, and, and, and you're right, and that's a, that's a valid, valid point. Um, yes, I'm still waiting for questions. I, want, I don't want him to go. That's the point. Uh, <laughs> I just believe that there, there is a question somewhere that someone is typing in or someone is going to go writing, and um, we want to take the opportunity to, um, to ask you because... Uh, you know, we don't get this opportunity often. You know, uh, if if to say they know, then you no know, say. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's it happen? We make us out. Yeah, yes, uh, but I think um, there are no more. So there is this middle stop asking: Would you be able to find some time to pen a few articles for us? Yeah, I'm sure I can find time to do that. Yeah, oh, 
So, I, I, I used to do a, I used to do a lot of well, not a lot. I used to do quite a bit of cricket writing uh, in uh, in the past. Um, I, I, one of the things I did actually when I when I played for Nigeria is I, I used to write diaries of my tours, uh, oh. uh, for, for in, in the sort of day by day diaries. Uh, those of you who were on the, if anyone is on the line who remembers the 2006 tour. Uh, and and the number of laps of cricket grounds that we did on on, on that tour, uh, I used to start my diary every day uh, by, <laughs> by, by counting how many laps we had done the, that that morning. Is that the Okun regime? And I would know. accumulate them by the end of two weeks. The number of laps of cricket grounds that we had we had covered was. Uh, uh, well, was, was un- unbelievable. Yes. Interesting. Do you still have links to those articles? It would be nice to go back and. Do you know? Would, uh, uh, exactly. I, I I will see if I still can find them. I I have a slight fear that I might have uh, lost well, them along the way. But let me see if I can find them. Okay. Yeah. Um, fantastic. I'm trying to find one more question here. So what is just? Yes, I love this question. Uh, which young player, young cricketer, do you admire, especially the current under 19? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. So I had the, the opportunity to go to South Africa to see the under-19 team play in the World Cup. You know, again, you were talking about, uh, you know, how do I manage it? Uh, I, I, and, and I'd been to Abu Dhabi earlier in the year. I'd explained to my wife, you know, it's not often that the national team gets to play in Abu Dhabi. It's going to be televised. You know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. You know, I can't afford to miss it. I explained and said, uh, okay, I understand. Uh, I came back from Abu Dhabi. I said, well, you know, there's a, an opportunity to, to go to South Africa. It's a once in a lifetime experience. Ah, no, no, but, but you just had a no, once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> that was last week. <laughs> ah. I said, you know, sometimes they come, come along just like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, 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 so I went to, so, so I was happy. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to South Africa and see the boys. You know, a, a, incredible experience for them. Clearly, you know, uh, you, the, the, we know we, we played three of you know England, Australia, West Indies. What what a mm-hmm. tough group! What a what, what a challenge for for the boys. And you know, really, you can't expect uh, with, with the, the level of uh, yeah, of of input performance that we have uh, th- that we are even on the same field with with, with, with those guys. As I, I, I said, Ute, this is a miracle. The, the fact that we are on the same field with these guys is a miracle. So whatever comes after that, t- take it as a bonus. I know the opening bowler for England in that tournament is in the same school as my as my son. They are classmates, and I know what it, what he has behind him. You know, he has been a county cricketer since since he was a, a, a under ten years old. Has been part of the county setup. He has professional coaches, access to bowling machines, all of that he has to come into b- before that tournament. Uh, and we have guys. And so I'm going to kind of come to the answer to, to your question now. Um, uh, and, and there's a, a who I saw uh, on that tour. I'd only seen him once before. I think it was the year before. And I called Ute and I said, "Where did you find this guy?" And he said, oh, "We were just doing like a an outreach development thing in Eloran, and this boy turned up, and we said that this this boy has something." Uh, and then I saw him uh, bowling against England, against, you know, county batsmen. All of these guys that you see playing for England are, are county players, or, yeah, like Ben Charlesworth, all of them. They, they, have, uh, they have county contracts. And uh, indeed, uh, Rashid Abolarin is his name. And he rushed in and he ha- hurried those people. And, and, and that, uh, that's the name I would give you. Yeah, this is, bring, this is uh, as you were explaining that, it keeps banging my head. And this is about everything about Nigeria. You have... You have the talent, but the resource to unnest the talent or to take it to that to the next level. In fact, we I'm not even talking about the 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 level where they should be, but the next level from that raw talent to the next level, it, mm. we never find it. What can we do to find to find that? And that'll be my last question here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, and it's a very good question. Um, I think that the raw talent takes you to a certain place, but cricket is a particular kind of game. Uh, you, know, you, you, can, you can be raw talent uh, in, in, in other games, and, and I think you will get a, 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 you know, a lot further. With cricket, you, you have to have the exposure 
to um, uh, to the next level and the way that you play at the next level has to come uh, pretty early on in your career and has to be sustained. Uh, and so I think uh, it's a little bit the same problem that the West Indies have, but they, they have it at a slightly different level. If you see them at age group, you're under 19, they are, they are still as, as, as dominant a force almost as they, as they always were. You can, you can never back yourself to beat a West Indies under 19 team. But what happens between there and the senior team? I think we have that problem one step down, is how do we get the, 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 the boys who have that talent as teenagers, 14, 15, 16, and how do you take them to that next level? And one of the things that I think would help us with, with that at the moment, given the structures that we have in place in, in yeah. Nigeria, and, and they are what they are, is how do we get those kids outside to, to cricket playing countries where, you know, they get to play, you know, in, in, in a summer, they will play 50 games of cricket yeah. on 50 different pitches. They will get to see all kinds of batsmen, all kinds of bowlers, yep. work with high quality coaches, have uh, access to, 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 like the nets we have at Lords, you know, they have those kind of facilities. And I think if we can get our crop of talents out at that age to have you know, two, three seasons where they, they have that, I think you will see them go to the next level. Wow. Interesting. Honestly. Personally, I can hold you here for two hours, and I know that the gist will. I, I, I actually have a call at eight o'clock, so I need yes, to. Yes, so I, I will. I, I will leave you here. No worries at all, Roland. Thank you so much. I'm sure the guys are blessed. They they really really happy hearing from you, and you know you honoring us. We appreciate that. So what we do is we keep these tapes and we play to the young guys again, and we always continue to play. So so they listen and they continue to grow. So if you go to our website, it's not 100% ready now, but if you go on the website, there is a place where all the interviews are kept and we continue to play. So it's not going to go out there and you know just stay, but. Thank you so much. We really appreciate Thank you. I appreciate Thank this. You. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. Thank See you, you very much. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye.